first time to paddle past the waves and be out over on the swells, the feeling of, oh, I'm in control of this ocean after all. Um, before, I've just been a, a, a little piece of seaweed getting belted around in the shore break with a surfboard. I can manage this environment, this beautiful, wonderful, fascinating environment of waves which break different day by day, hour by hour, week by week, and I can finally do something with it. things work. I've always been curious about how things work. The people who know me know that I'm not um, not money oriented or business oriented or greedy. You know? They know that I'm just a knock around guy really. Being a lover of physics and a lover of surfing the two just went hand in hand. Roll from end to end And reef breaks pin me down And then beach breaks Let me breathe a while While heartaches I can never ride I like the way she smiles In the morning time Sit on the grass and we watch the world go by I came to Byron in 56 with mum and dad when I was 12 years old. Fell in love with the place. Came back all through the 60s surfing here, but moved here in 68 for the first time. It's got the best variety of surf with warm water. There's 15 surf breaks from my house to the factory, and they work in all different wind angles and swell conditions. I left school when I was 14. So for those two years, I was a freak. Nobody understood what my addiction and my fascination with riding circles. I'd come to school on Monday raving about the weekend and the, no one would get it at all. You know, we were wild, independent fringe dwellers in the city. And we had every surfer in Sydney back in 1962. And they were, we were a gang. All the Sydney surfers were a gang and we were all outcasts. <laughs> We climbed on a ship in 1963 and uh, with no ticket, no passport, no nothing. Just a, a, little, a little Qantas bag with five pairs of board shorts and a bottle of scotch whiskey in it. And, and then that me and another guy and we walked onto the ship in Sydney and stayed there for the next 11 days till we got to Hawaii. Got off the ship by some devious means and spent um, five weeks surfing sunset all through December of 1963. Pretty good. In the early days, there was no such thing as a shortboard, so a surfer just rode a longboard. That was in the 60s, 50s, and 60s. Everybody rode longboard. I took off to Sydney and started in the surfboard factories. I was 17 then, and um, I started sanding surfboards first, and then that led into shaping within six months. Shortboard revolution of the late 60s put a McTavish stamp on surfing design forever. The, the longboarders and, and shortboarders are much closer than they ever were before. They all love good waves, they all love, enjoy quality surfing in the quality surf, so there's not that much between longboarders and shortboarders anymore. Longboards uh, have got their own motor built in, you know, like V8s, and they just chug along. They're out there enjoying having fun. There tends to be more of that vibe amongst longboarders that we're out here having fun. We're not out here to burn each other and hassle or 
deep and particularly to show off, you know, there's a more mellow vibe amongst the mob. It takes a lot of confidence because usually you're out there a bit by yourself while you're pushing those boundaries. As a shaper, you've got to come up with a concept first. There's no point in picking up the tools to work on a blank until you know what you want. Because you're picturing how the board's going to fit into the wave and how the human's feet and body are going to apply pressure to it. And so, but it's not cold and technical, it's, it's warm and alive in your brain, you know. So it's, you are definitely in a zone, without a doubt, when you're shaping. Say I'm out surfing a local break and I might wipe out three times in a row from one part, one part of the design of the board. So I immediately go back to the factory and shape something that would correct that problem. Then once you've produced a shape, it goes into the art department and the guy adds all the colour work under the glass. Laps and tints and pigments and stuff in the glass, which is it's the oldest, but it's also the newest method. The little factory supports quite a little group of, 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 of foreign people um, and it, each one's an artisan. Each guy has got really finely honed skills. cooperation, not competition. It works well. It, 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 things move faster and better and happier if you don't compete but you cooperate. Charles Willis is going to be a book on evolution versus creation. I mean, one night I was convinced there was a creator because of the physics, because of the, the, the logic of it all. You know, that evolution just is a fantasy. It's, it takes a giant leap of faith to believe in that, you know. So once a got to recognise there was a creator. Then I started to trust the Bible and then started to learn from that. And the Bible is a book about management of the earth. I think it has more of a spiritual element in the sense that it's, uh, we're playing in a gift from our creator. I see it as that. The future for the McTavish label, um, it'll It'll be around as long as I'm around and as long as my son Ben's around, I imagine. Um, but whether it's huge and international or it's small and, and very low-key marketing, I don't care, really. You know, it, I, mean, I enjoy it both ways because you're still getting good design in the hands of people. And that's my motivation with going, I'm happy to go global because I believe our designs give a lot of pleasure to a lot of people. endless future on this planet so I'm in no great rush to change and I intend to keep surfing as long as I can and designing. I can't see why I can't surf for another 20 years, I'm 64, I can't see why I'm not surfing 84. But you know, I love surfboards and I love shaping and I never get bored with it, ever. Life has its twists, has its turns. Life's many months many seasons time flows at one pace it don't change such beauty in being alive on earth and every little thing on this planet has such worth for it's with the simple things in life